Hi, noodles. Let's talk about love. Do you know what it's like to have noodles inside your head? We do. Hi, my name is Crystal, and we are the Noodle System. We call our altars noodles, and we didn't always know that we existed. Most of the time we were in denial, but now we accept us as rainbow noodles. Thank you for watching our vlog. The camera is our friend. I do appear normal. So today I wanted to talk about a situation that I have a hard time talking about because I'm two sides of the same coin. <laughs> And that's because of these guys, my noodles in my head. So I don't want anything I say to be the one and only absolute truth because I have a lot of truths about this subject. And this is the reason why we have started down the rabbit hole of discovering our identity, who we are, what we are and what we're all about. and we ran across DID and OSDD and it seems to make the most sense on why I can't make a decision. So yes, you're speaking right now to Orange and I have a hard time accepting this diagnosis. This OSDD 1A diagnosis might be true, but I'm going to speak from a perspective that is just a, a heart torn into two. Now, before the OSDD and the DID thing, I, as one person, as a singlet, was struggling with who am I if I am not attached to my husband? I called myself a codependent wife. Um, I would jump through hoops to make his life better and then be bitter and resentful when it wasn't enough for him, when he didn't jump through hoops to make my life better, when he wasn't listening, when he wasn't loving, I fell apart at the seams. When I made the him the center of my world, it, it made me really upset when I wasn't the center of his world. But in the same breath, he was very concerned about every move I made, which made it seem like I was the number one thing he thought about, morning, noon, and night. And so for a long time, I thought it was flattering that he wanted to know where I was going, who I was going with, when I'd be back. He started giving me permission to do things. He started giving me um, a leash and making the leash tighter and tighter and tighter. Like he wanted me all to himself. And that's not love. If you if you've got a if you've got a relationship like that, I want you to know right now that's not love. But I thought it was. I married him in my early 20s. We've had a couple of kids together. My kids are now teenagers, preteens, teenagers, and they they are the center of my life, the center of my world. But I can't even do things as a mom with them without that leash being pulled really tight. So it kind of drives me bonkers because I don't feel loved. I'm not getting the affection I want. I'm not getting the words that I want, the words of adoration. I, he, he doesn't want to get to know more about me, but he sure wants me by his side all the time. And he sure wants me, you know, home at a certain time. Like he, I, it's definitely a parental, a parental child type relationship and if you have a relationship like that please 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 work on your boundaries work on asserting yourself because if you're not doing that now because you're miserable you will be miserable it, it, it can't sustain itself that's my opinion as orange noodle i don't have a whole lot of um 
I don't have a whole lot of uh, words of advice for relationships that choose to do that. I don't think there can be, I don't think they could be successful at it. We were functioning of a relationship for a long time. I would even say maybe 10 years. We, we didn't, we weren't that bad at it. I would go ask him for my permission and then he would give me my permission. And sometimes I would cry and sometimes I would have depressive episodes and sometimes I, but it wasn't until 2015 that it became too much. It didn't feel like love. It didn't feel like a compromise. It, it felt like I gave up my freedoms to make this man comfortable, to make this man secure with himself because the underlining root of everything that he was at was insecurity. Okay, so I've definitely shared too much so far, but let me just say that as the host of this system, I need to talk about what our doodles are doing, okay? So prior to finding out that we were a system, the anxiety has gotten too much, the PTSD of conforming and asking permission and the Stockholm syndrome, you know, uh, whatever it wore off. I couldn't do it anymore. So I packed my things and we moved into, we, I moved into this bedroom and I have been living in a separate bedroom from my husband for four months. And I have been on a journey of self-discovery. I've been on a journey to figure out who I am without my husband. And in that path, I have found that I am a multitude of things that he would never know. He would never get want to get to know. He would never want to accept in his life because it doesn't fit the box that he wants it to be. And so I'm still left with this decision on well, do I continue down this rabbit hole of self-discovery and being who I am and letting my noodles out? Because they're all different. They're all very different from each other. And if he can't accept all of us as the whole package, as the whole rainbow, then I've got to make a decision because I'm not, I'm not interested in conforming anymore. I'm not interested in going back into the birdcage. So my entire existence, I have been playing the part that other people want me to play. And because I am old enough to recognize that that's not happiness, happiness is a self-expression of who I am and feeling validated for who I am. And then, of course, love and acceptance of myself first will only bring love and acceptance from others. Because other people can love and accept you all you want them to. But if you don't love and accept yourself first, the love and acceptance other people give you will never be enough. Last night, I was in a green noodle moment, if we're going to talk about noodles. I was in a green noodle moment, which to me means that the green noodle inside me wanted to get his love and attention any way possible. Guilt trips, manipulation, um, whining and crying and begging for it. She's just a very needy noodle. And we started down that path uh, as I'm in the passenger seat, so to speak, and green noodle is the driver and green noodle started doing what she does. And we got the response that we usually get and it was cold as ice. And something that I was doing as a yellow noodle, I was very, very in my wise mind as a yellow noodle four months ago when we moved into this bedroom, was I knew he was hurting. I knew he was upset. He had his loud music playing. He was um, drinking alcohol, which he never does. He was, he was avoiding his feelings. He wasn't talking to me. He was angry. He was snapping. 
And he, you could tell he was hurt by my choice to move into this room. And as Yellow Noodle, I'm just like, sorry, Charlie, I can't do this anymore. So you either accept me being a roommate for right now as we try to work things out and try to work on our marriage. And I, and I try to learn my truth because I can't lie to you anymore. I told him that. Or you kick me out. So he allowed me to stay here and I allowed him to self-soothe. I allowed him to not be a needy noodle himself. And he's done really well, more better and better over time, but he's done really well at learning to self-soothe. He's done really well at not needing me to soothe him. And so this morning I'm waking up realizing I need to get on to the camera and talk real quick to remind myself that sometimes Green Noodle is going to be Needy Noodle and she's going to want the love and attention from husband. And we need to remember that we need to self-soothe, love ourselves first, accept ourselves first, validate ourselves first, and stop looking for love and validation outwardly. I know we have been, but we, we do need to give it to ourselves first. So that's what I mean by this episode being labeled as love, it's not about finding love or, or being in love and all those other lovely things that everybody thinks about when you talk about love. It's talking about self-love. It's talking about love for yourself, love for your noodles, love for your place that you're in right now. Because even if it's not the place you're going to be at forever, it's a stepping stone. If you had stepping stones across a river and you didn't want to get wet, are you going to hate the stepping stone that you're on? Just love and accept it. You're, you're here now. You're here now. You're going to be at another stepping stone later and you're going to be at another stepping stone later. And you really appreciated the stepping stone that got you the one here now, didn't you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't wish for the one that you're on now to go away, right? Otherwise you'd fall in the water. Every stepping stone is important. Every stepping stone is significant to your journey to get to the side of the river that you need to be on. And maybe that journey is never ending until the day we die. Or maybe you're, you're, you're aiming for something specifically. Aiming, again, maybe you're aiming for something specifically and you really, really, really want your noodles to work together in harmony, just like a rainbow should. You mix all your rainbows together, you get a big gray rainbow, right? You get a rainbow that's just one hue. Accept each of your noodles just the way they are. Accept each and every one of them to be its own individual thing on the rainbow. And you'll have something beautiful. So love yourself, accept yourself, be who you are, and stop being that needy noodle that needs love and attention from elsewhere, from Instagram, from Facebook, from YouTube comments, from, I, I'm, I'm doing it myself as a, as a host who's, who has all these noodles behind me. I'm, I'm, I'm just as guilty, okay? But I'm, I'm making this video for me as well as for you. We need to do self-love first. That's all. Thank you for watching. Sorry, I'm... <laughs> I can tell I've got yellow. <laughs> kind of like, all right, let's wrap this up. All right, so we, 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 we're accepting our noodles, but yes, it's hard to sometimes. So um, yeah, we're human. We're human noodles. Talk to you later. Bye.